Today, let's talk about how to predict a silent stroke. A silent stroke is a stroke that has no symptoms. So how could you actually predict it? Is it possible? Well, we're going to use this book right here, one of my favorite books. It's called The Technology of War. You probably heard of The Art of War by Sun Tzu. But The Technology of War uh, was uh, written um, by this guy who um, found that there's so many confusions in The Art of War, he decided to learn Mandarin Chinese and transcribe the entire original text. And he was curious about if the original text was the same as some of these books that are put out there, The Art of War, or slightly different. And in a thumbnail, he found out that that original text was severely altered to the point of a lot of false information, a lot of confusing information. And so it's really difficult to make sense out of The Art of War. And even if you look at the original text on the name of the book, it wasn't even called The Art of War because art implies more maybe creativity, but a technology is a very specific thing. And so The Technology of War is Sun Tzu's original transcript on how he won so many wars. So we're going to apply that to the body. And the reason I'm going to do this is because of this word prediction. This book is really into predicting things like, number one, if you should go into battle or not, uh, you can predict that based on your advantages and things like that. If you only have a 10% chance of winning a battle, you better not go to war. You better run in the other direction as fast as you can because there's no advantage there. You're going to lose. So he talks a lot about uh, certain things or like clues or indicators to know um, if you're going to be successful or not. So we can apply that to the body too, and especially with the area of strokes. So even though you don't have this obvious symptom to tell you're going to get a stroke, there are some things that can uh, very easily give you information to know if you are going to have a stroke or not. And another really good reference or paragraph, um, which I'm going to paraphrase, has to do with um, being victorious, uh, knowing yourself and knowing your enemy. So if we were to apply this to health, it's very important to understand the nature of a stroke as well as how our body reacts to it and how potentially we can avoid it. So what do we know about silent strokes? There are strokes that occur without any symptoms at all. You have it and you don't even know you had it. Apparently, uh, the damage that it creates in the brain uh, doesn't uh, affect vital areas. So you might not even feel anything other than maybe a little bit of a a lapse in memory, maybe some fatigue, maybe some dizziness, maybe even a mood change. And what's interesting about these silent strokes is that in one reference I read, uh, they occur five times more than the strokes that create all the classic symptoms, like half of your body being numb or weak or having cognitive dysfunction or having slurred speech. But typically if someone has a stroke, whether it's a silent stroke or another stroke, uh, they're very likely to get another one. And strokes are basically the fifth leading cause of death in the U.S. and the second leading cause of death in the entire world. So what else do we know about strokes? Well, there's a lot of different aspects to strokes, but I'm basically going to talk about the, the most common situation with strokes, okay? You have these two uh, coronary arteries that come up through the neck through here. They supply the brain with blood. There's some other arteries, but these are the primary ones. And then they kind of merge with uh, some other arteries called the medial cerebral arteries. And most of the strokes, like over 50% of the strokes, occur in one of those main arteries. The most common type of strokes that occur in one of these arteries, like 85% of these strokes, is a situation where the blood clot originates in one of those arteries in the brain. So if we were to know the enemy uh, or know the blood clot, we take a look at a blood clot. What is a blood clot? And is it really an enemy? Um, it's actually just a, a mechanism of healing some type of bleeding uh, situation, maybe some damage in an artery. So it's not really the enemy. Yet a lot of times doctors treat it like the enemy by giving you a drug to thin it, but they don't really look at the true enemy behind the scenes. And that would be what we're going to talk about. So a blood clot is a kind of a, an aggregation of platelets which are things that help stop bleeding with uh, fibrinogen, which is kind of like the glue that binds everything together. And blood clots occur in response to some injury or damage, usually in an artery. And so what is the true enemy or the cause, the root cause of a stroke? Well, if you look at that, 
you're going to find some interesting things. Number one, high levels of sugar in the blood creates a lot of oxidation and creates a lot of damage in the artery. So there's a much higher association between diabetics or pre-diabetics or people with insulin resistance and getting blood clots. And so sugar directly, okay, too much dietary sugar and too many carbs can create this problem. Not to mention it really increases your inflammation as well as something called the sympathetic nervous system. That's right, the stress response. And that leads us to number two. That would be adrenaline, or you can call it epinephrine, the same thing. So adrenaline comes from stress. And adrenaline can directly increase the risk of getting a stroke, especially chronic adrenaline or epinephrine from chronic stress. Chronic stress causes a vasoconstriction, but it also creates a lot of inflammation and it creates your body running on glucose. That's right, glucose. I did another video on this and this is interesting because now this overlaps with number one, eating a lot of sugar. But in this case, you're not eating any sugar. The sugar that is there is coming from the stress state. So this combination of eating a high carb diet with stress is just a deadly combination for so many issues. These things I'm talking about are the true enemies that we need to understand and try to reduce as much as possible. And we get to chronic stress, there's many different types of stress. And I think the biggest stress is emotional stress, especially losses, loss of a loved one, loss of a job, loss of money, loss of anything can be very, very devastating to your body. And then we also have um, the side effect from medication like HRT, hormone replacement therapy. That would be the exposure to a lot of estrogen. Also birth control pills also increase the risk of getting these strokes. And then number four is smoking. Now, how could smoking, you're, you're breathing it in with your lungs, if it cause a stroke? Well, where does that uh, smoke and chemicals go? It goes to your lungs and right into your bloodstream that's carried up to the brain. And the smoke that ends up in your brain creates a lot of oxidation, free radical damage, and um, a lot of other issues. And then we have number five. Uh, this is another thing. It's um, hypertension. Now, this might not be the enemy either, just kind of like the tip of the iceberg that there's something else underneath it. But just the fact that you have hypertension can cause a different type of a stroke, which is a hemorrhagic, which you're bleeding because it, it blew a blood vessel. But if we take a look at hypertension, and what's interesting about hypertension is that 90% of hypertension is classified as essential, or another name for essential is primary. And what does that mean? Well, both of those terms describe hypertension of an unknown cause. Yet so many people are being treated by high blood pressure. I mean, it's pretty wild. I think there's probably a great advantage of keeping that cause unknown because you can actually make a lot of money on medication. But the point is that if you research um, hypertension and all the different mechanisms, you're pretty much going to end up with the real cause being either one of three things, okay, most commonly. Number one, insulin resistance. If you take a look at high sugar diets or high carb diets, it thickens the wall of the artery. It makes the artery stiff, okay, so there's no more elasticity. So you're going to increase pressure just from that. So again, that crosses over with the, the number one thing, which is the high sugar in the diet. Number two, a potassium deficiency. Now, what does potassium have to do with the arteries? Well, potassium keeps the arteries elastic. It keeps them flexible. And without potassium, your arteries can become very hardened and your blood pressure can go up. There's a lot of data on having enough potassium and keeping your blood pressure normalized. And where does potassium come from? Well, it comes from uh, a lot of the foods that are high in magnesium too, and that would be the leafy greens. Uh, the average person consumes only like a, a cup and a half of vegetables a day, where they really need about you know seven to 10 cups of salad per day, or four to five cups of regular vegetables. And a lack of potassium also can cause problems with arrhythmias, like atrial fibrillation, which is another predisposing factor of getting a stroke. And then we also have a lack of vitamin D which a lot of people are deficient in. The lack of vitamin D will create more inflammation. It will increase your chance of getting, you know, prediabetes and diabetes and insulin resistance. And so I always recommend a good amount of vitamin D, potassium, and they get on a low-carb diet. That seems to really handle a lot of hypertension, which will indirectly 
put you at a much lower risk of getting a stroke. So when we talk about predicting a silent stroke, if someone is eating a lot of carbs, okay, and they're diabetic, and they don't eat much salad, and they're going through a lot of stress, and they're sedentary, those are the true enemies, the factors that will predict a stroke. And one last concept I want to talk about in this book, um, the first part of the book is all about um, getting intel, intelligence. So you're able to evaluate and then predict and have the knowledge before you go to battle. Because if you go to battle or battled with an illness, a sickness, let's say you're battling cancer, for example, directly with chemotherapy and everything else and just throwing everything out at the wall to try to uh, reverse the situation, the outcomes are not that great if we understand the body as well as a lot of these other conditions. And that is what my YouTube channel is all about, giving you the information so you can estimate things or evaluate things and you can predict things and you can prevent a lot of health problems down the road. So number one, get on keto and intermittent fasting. Number two, make sure you have enough salad in your diet. That way you get the potassium and magnesium. Number three, start a regular exercise program to flush out the adrenaline and the stress that builds up that ends up creating a lot of problems and killing a lot of people. And also make sure that you're eating nutrient-dense foods to provide the B vitamins, vitamin C, vitamin E, vitamin D, for all the other support for creating a healthy body. Now, if you haven't seen this very popular video on the best meal to clean out your arteries, I put it up right here. Check it out.